labs, I think. Oh, yeah. Two labs and another two labs and two tutorials. Yeah. Anyway, I will let you know more because my hours are now climbing over the limit. So I said he should talk to Dr. Chambers about that. <laughs> So anyway, between now and next week, we hope to get it sorted out. Okay, sir. Uh -huh. um, right. All right. The, another thing while while we're just kind of waiting everybody to get to come in is um the whole matter of, of the canvas um, platform. I, I, what I have been doing, I've been putting people on canvas and I see where they don't, um, they don't register. They have a different name for it than canvas. Anyway, there are some people, some people who are not registering. <clears throat> So I'm wondering if people are having problems because Canva seems to not to allow people to register or whatever. I, I don't know what is the problem. Yes, sir. There is some, some problems and some drawbacks. Some problems. What is that? Sorry, I didn't get that last part. You think it's huh? no? It wasn't. Is my my volume is okay to everybody? Yes, sir. All right. Well, the others have to answer. I'm just one person. Sir. <laughs> right. Well, if you're if you don't have a problem getting onto Canvas, let um don't don't say anything. If you do, you can um give me an indication. And um, let me know. Better you just send me an email if you're not able to get onto campus. Send me. Mr. McLeary? Yes. Sir, Zavina here. I sent you an email with um, a list of students that, that are unable to access Canvas. You saw it? Oh, no. And that is another thing. Um, no, I haven't seen when he sent me that. Um, this morning. Right. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. All right, I am aware, or I became aware there is something wrong with the with the email system because I um, people some people send me emails from last week, last Friday or Saturday, some Friday, some Saturday. I when I look. No. Yeah. Well, hello. I'm going to I'm going to mute some eh? people. You know. Yeah. Are Are you saying something to me? Oh. Right. Um. Regarding. Uh, final major project. Um, Mr. Alexander sent me some emails, and up to now I haven't got them. 
<laughs> I realize I got nothing over the weekend. I get every few hours, I get two or three emails coming in. That I actually sent myself an email from my um, personal yeah, yeah. email to you, the UTEC email. Yeah, it hasn't arrived yet. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting. Number eighteen. Number eighteen. Number eighteen. Right. Um, I've muted everybody else. You can unmute yourself when you have something to contribute. But um, I, I am saying that I have not received your email, Zavina. And I've not received the emails I sent myself. I've not sent, received the emails I sent. Um, Mr. Alexander sent me about. Oh. So there, there is a, there seems to be a big problem with the UTEC email system. Okay, sir. So I, I don't know. Um, I'll give you uh, after all, I'll give you my my home email number, not you check, and you can email me on that one. I, yes, sir. I think I also um, I sent out emails regarding the, this um, class here a little earlier today, and I don't know if it went anywhere. <clears throat> Did did um did people receive an email from me about about the class for today? No, sir, I didn't receive one. No, yes, sir. no, sir. I, right. Well, the other thing is that I need to I need to update my email list. So maybe those who didn't receive aren't on it. I was going to respond to Anna K. I think she had her hand up. Do you have a question, Anna Kay? Oh, um, yes, sir. It's pertaining to the lab, and I just got I got your email. Um, it came in late, so I just saw it pop up in the updates. Um, as it relates to the write up, should we do a classical write up or just write up, um, based on the lab sheet? Just answer the questions as they come. Uh, okay. Good, good question. Typically, I don't really, um, I don't want a fully classical write-up uh, because your procedure is, is in your M file, is your, in your code that you're going to be sending. Basically, that is a, what I am interested in. Um, the code, you know, the objective, you're going to be using MATLAB to do your labs. Um, so your objective may be a little, a little a bit about the theory. Um, just something to make it interesting. Don't make it too straight, you know, the theory, in other words. If you're going to be doing echo and reverb, you know, we basically all know what echo and reverb is about. So you don't really have to go too much into the theory of that. But um, yes, I do need some writing. So I need like the objective. I do need to see your code, see your and hear your results or see your results, whatever the case may be. I will try and put a bit more into the labs to see exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, thank you. Um, Arubi could be nice. Right. And yeah, yeah. Another question. Um, uh, the question is me, sir. Sorry, what was that? Sir, I forgot the question. I saw... Oh, oh, all right. When you remember, when you remember. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can. What I want to do is just uh, 
I like to start off by just bringing everybody up to date, so to speak, on on where we are. Make sure and you know help to refresh because sometimes it's, it's not easy to pick up halfway through. All right, so our first. Uh, I can go ahead, right? Everybody is ready now. Anybody waiting? Hold on. Okay, good. Now I, I have 31 participants and that indicates to me that there are still some people who are not joining in. Um, not good because it's better we, we all go through together. All right, um, okay, so the first part of the course is really to refresh your memory uh, and fill in little gaps where, where they might exist because having done signals and systems, I am aware that a lot of um, that module, that course may be more dealing with continuous time and things may not always get covered in regarding discrete time. So I, I, I like to go through, review signal discrete time si signals and <coughs> system <coughs> and, and then maybe about another week or two. Well, we'll start getting into the nitty gritty probably this week. And certainly next week. Right. So in in reviewing, um, we're going to we look first at discrete signals and um, we know their time sequences. We know that the the expression for a, a sequence x is x equal x to the n where n is our index number into the sequence or series, sequence really. Uh, and what I don't think I mentioned last week is that <clears throat> signals can be one dimensional. In other words, a function of amplitude against time. They can be two dimensional. In, in other words, it can be, a, it could be a photograph. So the two independent variables are, you know, X and Y, so to speak. And your, your, um, actual informa information is, is the, um, the, the luminance of the, of the, of the point that you're, you're, identifying with X and Y. So those are the two um, intensity, that's the word I was thinking of. So the two independent variables are X and Y and the dependent variable is the intensity. So that's a two dimensional image. So please remember to start recording. Oh, you'd want all this on the recording? Okay. All right, um, let me, let me start. And persons want to be let into class. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Sir, um, are you reading from a screen? Because we're not seeing your screen now. You're just revising um, something. Right. I, <clears throat> I'm just talking about it because I don't want to be going all through back. This will actually be um, posted. If it's not already posted. I thought it no, was. sir. Nothing is posted. I, I can, I can um, bring up the screen. So let me do okay, that. Okay, sir. Also, you. sir, I see where somebody said person needs to be let in. So I don't know if person are popping up or you're not seeing them, sir. Right. I mm, I didn't see that. I, I saw um, a couple, I think, and let them in. Let me see. You Can you see anybody who wants to be let in? No? No, sir, I just saw a message in the chat that person wants to be let in. I can't see them. Only you alone being oh, the host. Oh, 
Oh, all right. Let me. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you have co-host enabled. If I have what? Do you have the co-host feature enabled on your account? No, I didn't yeah. enable the co-host. For oh, this. you you could do it, and then you could let in people. You have to do it for next class, sir. Oh, all right, all right. Well, at the moment, I I still don't. I don't see anybody. Oh, sir, it was me. I got through. Thank you. Oh, all right, fine. Yeah. All right, so let me. I'm going to share the screen where I am now, and I'm going to start recording. I think. Hmm. All right, so I'm recording now, <clears throat> and let me share the screen now. All right, so I'm not going to full screen it. Um, this is what I'm using to refresh my memory of what we did, we or we should have done last week. All right, so one-dimensional audio audio signals are usually one-dimensional, and photographs two-dimensional. Videos are three-dimensional because you have the two independent variables and the intensity and you have time as well. So, <clears throat> so we will only in, in the course, we are only required to do one dimensional. So we basically will not do any image processing. We will only be doing audio. And of course, there are a few other uh, mathematical things we can do apart from audio. Right, so, <clears throat> so we looked at what is a sequence, right, and our, our indexing into the sequence, and Right. I, I think I did mention, we will have to look at sources of discrete time signals. Most of them are, uh, most discrete time signals that uh, exist are derived from continuous time signals, which are sampled and converted into digital signals. In other words, digital signals are both time quantized, so they, they're only uh, indicated at certain times, the values at certain times, and those values may, will also be discretized or quantized, because you can't um, cover an infinite number of amplitudes, you have to, again, quantize the amplitude. So we quantize the time and we quantize the amplitude so to speak. Right, um, we will come back to sampling and reconstruction a little later on, but right now we want to get into the nitty gritty. Sampling and reconstruction really is not a, a DSP function. The signals should come to us as digital signals and we do the processing from there on. However, we just want to mention it so that as we go along, there, there's no gaps in our knowledge. <clears throat> All right, um, a few important points we brought up. I'll, I'll leave, this will be online so you can download it and also the, the audio. Um, graphically, well, we can represent Sequences are number of, in a number of ways. We can represent it just as a sequence in the squiggly brackets. We can represent it as um, um, co a coefficient and a delta number, which tells us the delta number indicates to us a point in time. All right, as a sum of scaled and delayed and delta impulses. That's how we put it. So we can represent it mathematically two ways, 
And graphically, we can represent it as shown on the screen right now. All right, now we can manipulate our sequences. We tend um, to want to manipulate all the values in, in the sequence because it is a, a very um, dynamic situation where we're not just at one point in time, we're moving through time as time goes on. So we can manipulate, a, uh, before I say that, so we, we have real-time processing. In other words, as we are getting the information, we are processing it and outputting the information. Or we, we, can, we can process in non-real-time, which is really what we will be doing um, most of the time in class and so on. In other words, you will record your your voice and you'll process your voice. You won't be doing it real time. But there's very little to distinguish between the two of them. Um, just that one signal is coming at you right now and you're creating the output right now. The other um, is that you're, you're working on a pre-recorded signal. So we, we will mostly be doing it non-real time. Um, right. So here, here are the, the, how we can manipulate the discrete time signals. We can add them together um, value by value and we don't... Um, all right, and I'll just leave it at that. We can multiply the two sequences value by value or sample by sample, um, or we could multiply the entire sequence by a value. In other words, we want to increase the volume of our audio signal, we would just be multiplying every, every sample by a fixed value, a scalar. And then, apart from that, we we can delay or shift the, the samples. Um, and we look at we look at some examples here. With, so I'll skip through these. Um, we did that last week. All right. Again, here, here we just want to characterize our or classify signals, so this can be read at your own leisure. We, before we go any further though, we need to um, look at two, two types of signal which we, we may need to process. One of them is, a, is called a deterministic signal. In other words, you can basically calculate the values. And um, such a signal would be uh, a, a 1000 hertz sinusoidal signal. If you had to process that, you can calculate it from the equation, the formula. The other type of signal that we have to deal with is a random signal, which cannot be predicted ahead of time um, and random signal is, is typically regarded as noise. So we will learn how to deal with noise or we'll see how it is dealt with. And um, the methods for dealing with noise are very often just using statistical techniques. Okay, <clears throat> there are some basic discrete time signals, which are deterministic, of course. Um, quickly look through unit sample sequence, um, which a plot of which is shown there, and we de it's defined as, as such. I won't go back over that again. We, we find that unit sample sequence has a couple of uses, one of which is to um, indicate what value 
falls at which time relative to n equals zero. So um, we can write, for example, a, a sequence five delta n plus two and so on as shown there. And that will eliminate the use of this little arrow, which is the arrow which is intended to tell us the point n equals zero. All right, so in general then, and this is an important little equation to, to show right here. Um, in The nice thing in DSP is that you never encounter the integral sign. I, I never liked in integrals. I learned to, to do them, but I never really liked them. Summation sign, yeah. much yeah, easier, yes? Sorry, then. Can you um, adjust the screen a bit so we can see if it is at 54%? Oh, oh, you're all right. So, all right. So, I'll full screen it then. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry. I, as I say, I was really using it as my own guide. All right. Is that better now? So, yeah. So, any sequence can be expressed in this form. Now, it so turns out this form is, is a... Um, Right. So, um, this equation here, summation, is written in a concise form here, where our x of k are, are our coefficients. Our coefficients are the, the numbers here before uh, the, this part of the equation. So, these are our coefficients. 5, 3, 2, and that is our x of k there. That is a sequence. And then here is our delta function. So that will tell us what point in, in time we're working on. <clears throat> okay, unit step sequence. Um, the delta function has other, other uses too, but I'm just moving through quickly. Unit step sequence again, um, from very much like the step function in, in, in continuous time systems, except very easy to, these are very easy to generate, these signals here. Um, okay, hold on. Right, so, this is really where we we ended last week. So the we will only look at three three of the most important basic sequences. And when I say basic sequences, we use them for various functions. Um, so the third one uh, is the exponential sequence or the exponential sequences, and they are formed by taking the, the um, nth sample value <coughs> to be the nth power. <coughs> Sorry. All right, so the general form is um, x to the n is equal to a alpha to the n. Okay, now a is generally a um, constant, and alpha is a constant, n is what changes, and n is, of course, changing as the sample value changes. So, if, if a and alpha are real numbers, then we have a real sequence, and I think I have a picture. So, here it is. This is a, a sequence of real numbers. If um, a is positive and the sequence values um, uh, and, and alpha is positive, then, and, um, sorry, if alpha is zero, between zero and one, then our sequence is going to decrease. If it is greater than one, our sequence is going to increase. And so you, you will realize that, um, most of the time, we're more interested in the decreasing series. 
the increasing series will tend to go away to infinity and there is therefore regarded as unstable. But exponential sequences are important, especially for analyzing discrete time systems. All right, so we, we come to the um, sinusoidal sequence. Now, the sinusoidal sequence is a special case, well, when I say special case, because it requires um, complex, complex numbers. And we will, first, we'll, we'll sort of show what a, uh, exponential sequence is going to look like when you're working. Of course, your X of N is your maximum amplitude because we know that this cos term only goes between 0, 1, back to 0, minus 1, back to 0, and so on. Right? So, sorry, well, in terms of cos, it will be 1, you know, and coming down and going back up again. So our, our cosine term here anyway is, is responsible for the sign. <clears throat> our, so this is our peak amplitude. So if this is 10, our signal is going to go 0, 10, 0, minus 10, and so on. The, this term here is a frequency term. I won't say anything more about that now. Here's our n and um, our phi is our phase shift. So well, uh, the phase shift will, will generally be a constant. All right, so these parameters, amplitude, angular frequency, because omega is 2 pi f, it's in radians, and um, phase. Right. Now, sinusoidal sequence can be obtained. Just a moment. Yeah. Right. So generally, a sinusoid in this form here defined will give you an um, infinite signal. In other words, it goes away to infinity. It doesn't stop, right? So we include this. Where A and alpha are real or complex numbers, here we are showing the possibility of alpha being in this term here is complex of course this is also um, having a a complex term here and if we so if we combine them and, and write x of n in terms of these two variables then x of n is equal to this term here, I won't go through one. And we can, at this point here, so here are two complex terms here, now we can um, I want to get rid of um, sorry. Coming, coming back but at the bottom, I can't see it, but this term here, A, E, sigma, naught, N, is, is real, is a real component, and E to the J omega N plus phi is our complex component. Right. So, <clears throat> usually, um, for example, E may be considered uh, zero, I'm um, sorry, sigma considered zero, sigma n is zero, e to the power zero is one, so we're left with a. So the, these are just the 
um, complete possible terms, but usually we won't be having to deal with these parts here. Right, so here, here it is. This is our real term, so here, and this is our imaginary term, term, term. And therefore, if we expand, if we expand this term here, we know that this term expands to cos omega naught n plus phi plus j sine omega naught n plus phi. Of course, the a, this term here is multiplied both of them. So, um, so right, so this is a general form. In other words, our complex exponential may be consisting of cosine and sine terms. It may have only sine terms or it may have only cosine terms. And hopefully you're familiar with these conventions. If you're going to be doing telecoms or if you have done it already, you would, you would certainly be more familiar with the um, expansion here. I do have um, what I call a revision note of expansion of the um, of e e to the j theta, for example. I will. I was looking for it. I think it's at UTEC. So right. So these then are our um, sinusoidal sequences here. Oh, let me go back here and just say, okay, so if, if, um, so if, if, for example, um, this term here is zero, Right, so if, if, um, lost my train of thinking, one moment. Yes, I'm remembering now. Right. <clears throat> Sorry. I, I the the following diagram shows what happens if sigma is zero. Then, of course, um, this term e to the sigma n is always going to be one, and therefore the um, sequence has constant amplitude. If it is less than zero, in other words, negative. Um, then it will decrease, and if it is greater than um, zero, in other words, positive, it will increase as in, and increase it. So our next slide here is showing um, for decaying sinusoid. So it gets smaller and smaller. Just a, an example. Um, Right, and then finally, um, what do we want to what do we want to use the sinusoids for? Well, very useful in in a lot of ways, um, in communication, in signaling, and so on. Um, 
And of course, if we want to measure um, frequency response of a system, like audio filter and so on, actually, <clears throat> we would only be doing it in, in real time. In actual fact, we can plot the frequency response without, you know, generating frequencies and measuring their passage through the system. All right, so this is just a frequency response of a filter, and we'll see how we can um, do all of this, calculate all of this without generating sinus size and taking measurements. But Right, so that's where we are stuck for the um, discrete time signals right now. <clears throat> so, what apart from what we've done here, the other signals will be, for example, your voice, which are are basically random, but can be processed in a lot of different ways, and we will spend the, the recording that you're doing for your first lab, we will spend a lot of time during the semester actually doing processing, um, hopefully some interesting things, and looking and seeing what we can analyze out of your voice as we go along. But of course, uh, voice signals are to some extent random. But um, apart from that, we have, you have lots of other signals, um, for example, radar and so on. So that is it for, for the signals. We will look at um, systems next. I wouldn't mind taking a little break. Um, my voice is a bit off today, and so I'll give it a 10 minute break or so. Are there any questions or comments before we take a break? So, I'm going to like a MATLAB example, one of them there. Right, I I wanted I wanted to do it. Um, I do, I don't like to expose my deficiencies, but I, I will just explain what what is the problem right now. Okay, it's, sir, because I don't understand what no. that thing is about, uh, and I allow you use MATLAB as well. So, right. You're, I'm going to. I never, what, this is the first time I'm using it. So, <laughs> oh, the first time you are using it. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. My my problem is I have to be using this this laptop here, which is Windows 10. My laptop um, over in the corner there has Windows 7. Now, when I try and do screen sharing from Windows 7 on Zoom, um, it doesn't work. Uh, everybody, all everybody just sees a, a, a black screen and um, not, even, not even me, I don't even see what I'm supposed to be sharing. So what I will have to do, because um, it would have been nice to actually type in these things and run them. I'm, I'm still seeing how we can do it. Um, it might mean loading up MATLAB on to this here and um, but what I will do what I can do is I can do it um, I think I can do it and record it on that one and then I would have to be playing what is happening the um, yeah the, the, but MATLAB is very nice doing things in MATLAB and in fact the idea is that you you will you will be doing a lot of things. I will ask you to do some some basic um, operations in class, just as a like a little 
Um, well, in the tutorial, certainly, a little take-home thing. Um, how do you plot? For example, you could I could have said, all right, here, here's the equation. Plot your um, a, 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 a sinusoid, a sinusoid, decaying sinusoid in MATLAB with um, so much frequency and so much. So I will try and do it and um, try and get it on this one. As I say, it might be, might be done um, in non-real time. I'll see how it goes. But at the same time, I'm going to try and give you um, the, the commands that, that I'd like you to use. Because, in fact, <clears throat> I don't even know the full extent of the MATLAB commands now. When um, I was using, like, revision 7 MATLAB R7, right, there were some commands that we had to, basically, we had to program in four or five lines of code. And now there's just one command will, which will just do it for you. And I am tending to say to, to the group, I want to say you do it with four or five lines of code because then you better understand what you're doing. So there may be cases when we're going along where I said to you, okay, for example, I might say design such and such a filter. Well, now you can just put in one command and all the parameters and it designed the filter for you. But I, I won't want you to do that. I will want you to be able to do it from scratch, so to speak. So things like that I will um, I will want you to do. All right, well, and I, I will try as we go along, I will be telling you the various commands that. Um, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh -huh. So I was looking again pertinent to the lab. I was looking at a particular section that was speaking of um, precision and I couldn't really follow exactly what what I'm looking for the no, numer numeric format oh yes this is lab number one yes sir that's the only lab, lab that's new right uh, again um, all right let me explain what, what I was looking for there in in, in when you record your voice the analog to digital converter in, in your sound card is going to do the conversion for you. The thing about MATLAB is that MATLAB can instruct that card, pass on certain instructions to tell the card, or it, it may be that the card just produces one format of digital signal and the MATLAB is is converting it depending on what you command it to do. I don't know the internal working of the, the sound card, but normally then, so the card would sample your voice and you'd have samples every T seconds, right? um, might, might be 125 microseconds. And then how your amplitude now is coded is is a, is what what I was asking in that um, in the lab. So you could tell MATLAB that you wanted to record your voice in thirty two bit format, um, sixteen bit um, UI integer um, just as an integer. Uh, unsigned integer, and there, these are various formats that um, signals are, are are sometimes coded in. So <clears throat> you may get, for example, you, if you're looking at an unsigned integer, and um, it's like a, 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 a eight bit eight bit unsigned would have two two fifty six possible values. So you may see that you get a, a string of numbers, you know, all of them falling between 0 and 256. 
right? Mm-hmm. And um, so, if you, but I think, I think now the most recent version of MATLAB that I have, it doesn't bother with that again. So when you look, you can, you will just see, uh, um, I think you, you, you see a floating point number, but that floating point number is still quantized, if you know, there's what I'm saying, there's still a limit as to how large that floating point number can be, how small each division can be. So, um, what I wanted you to do in the lab, basically, not necessarily to to write up anything big, but to look at the different formats. So you could have 16-bit, 32-bit floating point. You could have, um, and for those who have done C and and you know that you're going to define your your um, variables as floating point or integer and so on. Just to so just for you to look, have a look and see how how MATLAB is is recording it. And as I say, you can give MATLAB certain instructions, a certain amount of instructions. I'm not even sure. No which ones MATLAB will allow and which one they won't allow. So it was just for you to experiment, play around and see for yourself. So, sir, now that you mentioned all of that and everything is noted, but like, wouldn't wouldn't you need to, in order to know the encoded format of the Mm -hmm. file, you'd have to have a recording of it. How would you be able to see it inside MATLAB? I tried using the function which you mentioned, which is whose, which is WHOS. Yeah. But I'm not seeing, I'm just seeing like the size, which is like an array one by one, um, the bit, the bit or byte size, um, and the class that it's in. I'm not getting much information and that is for all the variables that i've used inside of the program so, right. I'm sure. so I'm, i was a bit lost in trying to even because so the 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 um when you do who's the, you know there's two commands one is who and the other one is who yes and um I, right now i don't remember um i think I'll, who's give you a bit more a bit more information. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The idea was that um, you you were just just to give you an idea. Well, if it's um, um, for example stored as a a sixteen bit number, you know, and you have um, your sampling rate was eight thousand hertz or samples per second, and each sample was eight bits and it was 10 seconds long you know to look at the size of the um the variable and you know get it you know see that they are everything is related in other words the sampling rate and the 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 encoding number of bits and the the, ta- the, the time and the time, yes, the length of the recording. You should be, you know, calculating and seeing everything adds up. You know? So, no, it was just that. Um, okay, sir. So. I don't remember if I did say that I didn't particularly need a great... Need a? A, a great amount of write-up on that part there. No, it sir, it's just that it wasn't very clear, and I thought yeah. it was. Oh, all right. What I need to do is, um, mo- most of these labs, you know, they were written when I was using MATLAB 7, version 7 of R7. And um, then when I got the later, the later version at all, I don't know if it's 15 or so, I got a shock, you know, because <laughs> so many things had changed. Yes, sir. Um, so many of the commands won't work. I've been trying as I go along to 
find out which commands are chain have changed. For example, um, I used to I think they I used to say the the, the command to record your voice was wave record W V R E C O R D, and then yes, sir, that, that, only to find out that that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> No, sir. Uh, not on the 64, sorry, I should say not on the 64-bit version. I understand it still works on the 32-bit machines, but not on 64. So, it, sometimes it's really hard to keep up with MATLAB. That's all I can say. So, you have to, you have to understand and where you are already that experience and you can tell me what update is needed to the labs I'm, I would be most grateful so um, MATLAB is, is uh, not MATLAB DSP is a, a topic it has changed so much in the, I've been teaching it 20 years has changed a lot um, and therefore I would never profess you know, to know, know everything and um, so if it don't feel any way, if you, if you see something that needs correcting or updating or so, I would be grateful if you let me know. Okay, sir. Mm. So that would, that would, that would then answer my question. Still does uh, answer. It, no, I would say that would answer my oh, other would. question I would have about the FS, which is the frequency used to record, um, that you would record or sample your voice uh, during the recording in MATLAB. The 8,000 samples per second. Yes, sir. Uh -huh, so right. It's a frequency of 8,000. And there, there were some, you have to include a bit, a bit size. That's why I was wondering how, but you're saying that even the bit that, the bit size that we use in the program, the, the sound card of our laptops would um, probably sample it are at a different bit or a bit rate or number of bits. That's well, why you wanted to do the comparison. Um, what, once MATLAB accepts your, your command, if it, um, I, it, it means that the, the sound card should, should accept it, it you know. Um, <clears throat> so, so for example, I think the unsigned integer you in is one that can no longer use. So MATLAB will just give you an error. Um, you know, but if you if you tell it 16 bit or whatever, um, I don't remember all the command no, but if you tell it that and MATLAB accepts it, then you should get that. That is what you would get. When you when you do that now and you've written your so you you write you 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 record your voice into a into an array. Yes, sir. You can then you can write from that array into a, a wave file, right? Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Um, in in most cases, I I would think that MATLAB. Once you're going to process it, MATLAB will tell you if, if there's any problem with the format. And I don't remember, I don't remember getting errors in the format. Once it's in there, MATLAB will convert it to the format it needs automatically. If you, if you give it a command, um, and as you'll see when we go on a, a little further after this, that, um, your you you will you're going you're going to have a system and you have your signal which you should have recorded now then you're going to start processing it through the system matlab will just automatically make sure that your format is correct you know 
I, I haven't, I don't recall experiencing any problem there. Okay, sir. And which leads to another question before my uh, final yeah. question. Um, what, which one of, the, what version of the recording should be saved? Is it the normalized one or the, just the un, untouched? Untouched. Yes. Yeah, um, really the normalized one. That's the one um, that we'll be using continuously. That, that one, yeah, that one is the one I would like you to use, right? All through. The reason why is that, uh, well, one of the reasons why is that if I, if I ask you to process um, your, your, your recording and do something, I want, I want to know that all of them are um, similar certain in, in certain aspects. In other words, they're normalized. And, um, you know, so it helps out, helps out to have everybody using their normalized version. So um, that's why I want that. You, I mean, you could save, you could still save your original recording. Um, nothing wrong with that, but I will ask for you to return the, what you have processed on your normalized. So keep that normalized always so you can, <coughs> sorry, that, so that you can, you can, you know, use it from one lab to the next. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. that, that's, my, that's my last question. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So, any other questions before we take a little break? Oh, all right, um, we can, we have unlimited time, right? So we could take like about a, a 15, well, we could, what time is it? I, yeah, we could take like about a 15 minute break. We could meet about 20 past. Yeah, we'll meet about 20 past four then. Come back again, all right. I'll just leave the computer open right now.
Okay, I'm going to begin. I will... Okay, I'm recording again. So, welcome to the second part of this um, instruction on discrete time systems. Now we have looked at our signals. What is it that we're going to do with them? So, <clears throat> as each sample comes into our system, it is processed. And what we will do now is have a look at the systems that process the signal. All right, so we're going to review the following topics. Um, what are discrete time, linear time invariant systems very quickly, because I know you have done um, these in continuous time systems. We'll, and we'll look at the main characteristics that we're interested in. <clears throat> and then we'll look at basic discrete time operations. Right, so the function of a discrete time system is to process the input se sequence and in turn generate an output sequence. Um, in most applications, and certainly for this module, our discrete time system will be a single input, single output system as shown. So our input sequence, we will most likely refer to it as Xn, and our system will produce an output sequence Y of n. Hmm. All right, so our discrete time system is, is really a, a process of, of sorts that um, will process the signal according to some prescribed rules referred to as an algorithm. <clears throat> While discrete time systems include both linear and nonlinear systems, we will restrict our studies to the linear time invariant um, group of systems. These are characterized by two main properties anyway, and the first one, homogeneity, a change in the amplitude of the input signal always results in a proportional change in the amplitude of the output signal. So we know that linearity begins there. Um, so we say, if our signal into our system is Xn, and then multiplying that signal K Xn will give an output K Yn. So the signal itself is just going to be, each term is going to be amplified by a constant. 
The other very important property then is additivity or better understood maybe sometimes when we say superposition. Signals added at the input produce signals that are added at the output. So if, if our input here has a signal X1N and it produces an output Y1N, right? And if, it, if an input X2N is put into the system separately and produces an output Y2N, then if we have this combined signal X1N plus X2N at the input, then we expect to get Y1N plus Y2N at the output. In other words, notice that there's no multiplying of the signal. Now, multiplication of the signal, of course, is a non-linear operation. So, we will um, we have, have two signals like that, <clears throat> or mixing then of the si signals, is, is um, not a characteristic of a linear system. <clears throat> okay, there is a third important property um, of, more, of the systems we will do, and that is time invariance. This really refers to the property of the system that its characteristic does not change with time. So if we processed a signal today and, it, and we got a certain output, and we put the same signal into the same system tomorrow, then we expect to get the same output as we got the first, the first day, the previous day. <clears throat> and therefore, a time shift of the input signal only results in an identical time shift in the output. Now, these um, three properties may look very simple, but we will see that um, it's very important. All right, now we look at some other factors um, that are not really um, they don't really affect a, a linear time invariant system, but they are conditions that we have to understand. The first one is causality. In other words, in a causal system, the, the n zero output sample depends only on input samples, which, <coughs> sorry, um, which have come into the system at n equal or less than n zero. So let us say our present output is 10. Then our inputs that will determine the output of being 10 must only have come in at the same instant or previously. It cannot be <clears throat> a signal which is coming in in the next instant or later today because we can't see that far. We can't predict and therefore prediction is not a function of causality. So causality really means what came in, what is, has just come in, and previously. So that, uh, this is another way of putting it. There are a number of ways of trying to express it. And that is the main one we want to consider. So we will um, never consider a system um, that is non-causal. 
all our systems that we will deal with will be causal systems. You could theoretically have a causal input. In other words, if you had a, something on a, a DVD or a CD, yes, you could look ahead. So before you started, you could have looked ahead and you could know every sample that will be coming in for the next hour or half hour, right? But, but as such, systems are not designed to, to work on that principle, not as far as I know. <clears throat> right, now our, our discrete time system is going to be an interconnection of a set of simple subsystems. So we'll look at that now. So we're going to look at, of course, these algorithms are in a ma mathematical form, but we're going to also look at them in a block diagram form. So the same way that you would have a, a, a circuit, an oscillator circuit, and it would have a transistor, resistors, and maybe inductors. Um, but at the same time, you, you do your calculations. That doesn't tell you everything. You have to plug your calculations into the equation, and you will then know what frequency that oscillator is oscillating at. So we, we, are, we are going to, in this course here, we will, of course, do things at the operations in mathematical form, but we are also going to be looking at the, the, the circuit diagram or in this case of block, block diagram form. All right, so <clears throat> the first one we look at, scalar multiplication. A new sequence can be generated by multiplying each sample of the input sequence X of N by a scalar quantity. So, of course, if A is greater than 1, we're amplifying. If A is between less than 1 and uh, 0, so between 0 and then less than 1, then we are actually um, reducing the amplitude. So we could, it could be said that we're attenuating our signal. All right, now in block diagram form, this is shown as an amplifier just the same way as it's shown in, in a continuous time signal. It's shown in a, in a discrete time signal as a triangle with the value A the gain inside. <clears throat> um, if, we, if it was a, a minus A, then all is happening is that we're, we're well, if A was 1, if it was, say, minus 1, we're just inverting the phase. Now, that is still quite important. So, where we see minus, we're just inverting the phase. The second one is <clears throat> addition. So, you can add two corresponding values of, 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 uh, of two different sequences, as shown there. Um, and we did an example earlier on last week. Now, two inputs could be shown into this operation here. Remember, this, this here is not the system itself. This is just an operation within the system. So addition, you must have two different inputs and you produce a output here. <coughs> why, why? Now, Sometimes we will see, or often we will see, that there are actually multiple additions in our equation here. So the summation operation is sometimes used. In other words, here is a summation operation. It just so happens that it is adding um, a n and then another value a n plus one and another value a n plus two and another value a n plus three. So these really correspond as we can see four consecutive values coming into the system. <clears throat> um, 
it so happens that we are we are predicting so we know that this is not really a, a valid um, set of inputs but it can be a valid sum it is still a valid sum just to note there so in in your diagrams when you're drawing you're going to be drawing these diagrams so you will draw your things are so you will where there's a gain or you will draw um, your box with the gain inside or or outside nearby so we can know where it is if we're doing addition then we will draw our circle with a plus inside to indicate or we may draw it as a summation now people will all, later on they are gonna say which one i should use which one is correct they're both correct so you will when you're going through your literature you will expect to see you can see either one and then <clears throat> the next one is a delay so we may delay a sequence by d samples so if each sample is coming in at one millisecond so you could delay it by five milliseconds or ten milliseconds or, or longer all we need is a method to delay the signal and this was one of the great problems with early dsp how to delay your sample now it is very easy because you have memory so you just put it into memory for the period you want to delay it and you just take it back out and process so d of course must be a fixed integer and remember that n and d n must be an integer d must also be an integer <clears throat> right so if if d now this can be confusing if d is greater than zero then the operation is a delaying operation so that means then if d was one you'd have n minus one right which is actually a delay if d is less than zero then for example if d is minus five then you have n minus minus five which you end up with n plus five so it's an advancing operation so it may be a bit confusing but um fairly easy to straighten it out all right a device to delay the input by one sample is called a unit delay and its symbol is shown note now that causal systems only have delays right so we are reinforcing you can't see into the future but you can look at the last um, incoming samples so here's our our symbol it's a square box and here the unit delay x n minus one and our output then if 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 um if our input is x of n then our output is x n minus one and it's normally shown like this or z to the minus one the reason why it's shown like this we will come to later on and finally before i leave delay um yeah standard most times we are dealing with delays one two or so samples but you could be dealing with um a delay of four thousand samples and so people again say what should i do must i draw four thousand boxes with minus one in there no you're going to just put your delay box minus four thousand right <clears throat> okay so on to the next one well there is such an operation as a product operation but 
in DSP, normally we consider that there are only three operations. It's like your digital circuit. There's only and, or, and, and not gates. And your most powerful computer is built up from three very simple operations, and or not. In DSP, you have three basic operations. You have scalar multiplication, you have addition, and you have delay. So all our DSP systems have only these three components. Very nice, no integration, no differentiation, nothing. All right. Um, of course, I'm sure you, you are aware that all of these, those um, operations can be done numerically. Right. So um, your DST can still do the operation numerically. All right. But we, we are going to consider the case of a product operation because <laughs> There are certain times when um, product operation is required. And it will, and it of course indicated, for example, if we, if we have a product operation of Xn um, times Wn, then um, it's often called a dot product. <laughs> and that's because the, the product must take place between, of course, two, two identical sequences. Um, well, two identical um, delay, uh, n, n's, right? So here, our input xn is multiplied by wn to give another um, output g of n. Now, this is a nonlinear operation and therefore doesn't fall into the realm of the linear time invariant system. But what it, its application is, is um, a major application, is that it's often referred to as windowing. So, if you have a signal coming in here, Xn, and you that signal goes on forever and ever and ever. But let us say that you only want to reduce it from an infinite sequence into a finite sequence, say of 10 samples. Then you, you use a window function, a window function of 10 ones, and all the rest of the values in that sequence are zero. And so when you, mul when you multiply x of n by your window function, it means that now you choose, you pick out your 10 samples that you want to process. And that is uh, actually a very useful function in DSP. So hence I, I bring it up now. All right, well, <clears throat> We have really come to um, where I'm going to stop now. I'm sure everybody, if, if you're not sleeping, you're probably getting pretty sleepy. Um, but our, so our next um, lecture now will be on digital filter realization. And we're going to see how, how we construct our um, discrete time system out of those three components that we mentioned to carry out, you know, really an amazing set of operations. Uh, we will start with the simplest filter. Of course, all, all DSP systems are, are generally referred to as filters. We will start with the simplest filter, which is called the finite impulse response filter. 
we'll see how it is. Um, we'll do an example with it and see how it is constructed. And very quickly we'll be designing we'll, from, from scratch our, our filters um, given what is known as the difference equation. So we'll look at the difference equation and be able to design a filter or we'll be able to look at a, a block diagram of a filter and extract the difference equation and so on and move on from there. <clears throat> so, um, that is where we will end today then. So, I, from next week, what I will do is I will take a break again about this time of the um, afternoon and then spend time from five to six, if you so care, doing tutorial problems, doing problems or answering any questions. All right, before I um, sign off fully, are there any questions, any comments? So the video there with the MATLAB example, sir, how, when should we anticipate that? All right. Um, well, definitely next week. Uh, I'm, I will, yeah, I'll try and put together some examples of, of what we have done using MATLAB. For example, we, we could um, look at the the decaying exponential and so on. Can't think too much of what we might do so far, but definitely next week, um, because what I will, every, every, everything that I teach basically, you can use um, MATLAB and determine whether I'm being honest or I'm being a bit Trumpish. Um, and not, not telling the truth. So every, basically I like to say everything that we do, you can demonstrate it using MATLAB and you can test it and so on. So that's where this, this course differs from a lot of courses. So starting next week, I promise. But in the meantime, I'll try and do a few, uh, one or two short videos on on using MATLAB and, um, and put it on the, the platform. Um, sir, I have a question about slide 16. About what system? Slide 16. Did you say flight systems? Slide 16. Oh, oh slide. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, could you go back to this thing? Um, I wanted to ask about the Q value. Oh, which one? The Q, all right, sir. So, um, the Q would be the, um, at slide 16, sir. Not 15, 16. Oh, I'm not, I'm not hearing you very well. I don't know if you're... Slide 15, slide 16. Oh, so this, this one here? That one there? Yes, sir. Um. The, the Q value, that's what represent, that represents the samples that you want to take out, right? The, which, the, oh, uh, yes, right, right. Uh -huh. Sir, so in a case where you want, say you do not, um, well, let me ask it a different way. So the Q value starts from the very initial, the first sample, right? It, it isn't like, so for example, I have 50 samples and I want to take out between 20 and 30, um, how would the Q, how could we manipulate that um, equation? Right. <coughs> well, the Q is actually the, the number, the number of samples you're going to take. The N now will determine where, where the 20 is. So the N, the N you want it to say between um, you said, say between 20 and 30, yeah. right? So what you'd want to do then is, um, if you, if you 
who are going to put you have um you have 20 and then you have 20 minus you have the 15 um it, it yeah oh um let me see something here i i've i'm not um and i need to go close this one here and i need to annotate and i need to no oh, i don't want to do that on there um just, just give me a minute here i was just gonna I was gonna try and draw something but um this down. no i need to get my blank screen now so so um hmm. How do I get my oh, new share? How can I get a blank? Okay, this one here, good. And then, so I just create another. Right, eh? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, I just not very familiar with finding my way around. You know? Okay. Sure, one more question, sir. Um, uh, is it to do with um? Straight line now. Yeah, yeah. Can um, is it all right to 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 go on with this one, right? So we have a. Let us say this is our timeline, and I will try and draw in all a little. Oh, I'm not doing it very well. Right, so this is supposed to be that one and then, so this is supposed to be n equals zero. Anyway, basically, so you have um, your, your sample all, oh boy. Anyway, so your samples are, are as I said, they are there. Okay, so you want to now pick out, say like four samples, right? Let's say you want to pick out these four here, um, these ones here. Then what you can have, um, imagine all of these are different values. <laughs> you know, so this would be your X here. No, no, text. Hold on. X. Okay, this is your X of N. So you then create your, your window now. So, down here would be your window. Right, so next, okay, come on, guy. Then on. All right. So whichever and and here again, this is your n equals zero value. So whichever values you wanted to pick out, um, you could you can just make your w n. You know, so you want you to pick out these four values. So these would all be sorry. one, two, and let us say this one now here. Right. So these would all these would be very different values. So for example, um, this one might actually be quite big and this one might be going down it can be both positive and negative but anyway and so all you're going to do now is that you're going to arrange n based on on where these are 
regard to um, with regard to n equals zero, and then this now is going to be your q value. So, if for example, this is this would be minus one. So here, this um, your your n value would be minus one, and then your other value would be q would be four. So I take out minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Um, I might not have it very correct there, but I'm sure you can work it out all right. Yes, sir, I understand it. And it goes in that direction because it's a minus sign, right? Right, so these are negative values of n. Here, yeah, this is n equals zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, four, minus five. So, it, it can be very confusing. So, you know, write it down and test it and see whether you're right or whether it's wrong, whether it's going in the wrong direction or so. But um, it can be worked out fairly easily. But, right, but I'm, I'm glad you asked the question because this gives you a, um, uh, okay, just learning myself. So this gives you a, um, a good picture of what we really mean by windowing because when we multiply these two sequences, all these values here disappear and all these going back to infinity. Um, disappear. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. okay. Any other questions? That, 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 a very good question. I, um, I, I know you're somebody who pays very good attention. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, no other questions? All right, well, thank you for listening. Yes, sir, I have a question, sir. Okay, go ahead. Sir, I didn't, um, I'm not sure if you had mentioned something earlier or not previously about um, the right of, of the labs, um, what you're expecting. Sir, so I'm asking, I heard you mentioned something about, I heard you talking about the theory, but I don't recall you saying something about like, the, the lab format in terms of how you want it, sir. Um, you spoke on that, sir? I, I did mention that, but uh, I could just say that um, coming out of that question there, I said what I'm going to do is try and give a little more information on what I expect to see in the write-ups. Um, I think... Sir, um, but um, the, the labs are... Um, I think the first lab is supposed to be submitted um, next week, Tuesday, and we don't have you again until probably the... I think when right. the lab is new, so I, I'm not sure what you're right. expecting. Or what is yeah. required? I, I will I will work I'll I'll work on a little write-up and post it on the platform. And if you don't see anything by Friday, could you remind me? Just send me a little email or something. Yes, sir, I will. Yes. Um on what again I don't like to say too much but I seem to be <laughs> under a lot of pressure sorting out um the some of the grading for, for major projects. And, yeah, I understand. I don't understand. and this one. So I, I am I have a lot of things trying to do at the same time. That's all I can say. And then don't forget. But but don't hesitate if you want to remind me. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Has anybody um, has anybody done all the the practical work for lab number one? No, 
Okay. So there was another question to ask about it again. Mm -hmm. So it's regarding the stem plot. Yes. I was wondering how would you, because you're saying that um, for each word that you're, for each word from the, the phrase that we should we should record, we can separate them, and um, we could determine what um, sequence from the from the um, stem plot. Okay. Um. You. Yeah. Like X X of zero, I think, was in the lab. But I have an understanding of it, but I'm not sure if what I'm thinking is the right. Or if it makes oh. any sense. Okay. Um. I better have a look at that lab. Um. Again, because I don't quite. Can't quite. Make sure what what, what, what I'm thinking I have. But what I think I had wanted is just to just to show that the when you record your voice, um you can actually you you know you, you could edit it. In other words, you could cut out those values from a sequence and actually move around. So, um, and that is on a very, a very simple basis, you know, you did, you can do it without any great powerful software, you know, simply by um, cutting, basically cutting and piecing. Because okay. so it's just that section of that, section of the speech you'd want to remove and place it. Well, I, I, I was really thinking of you moving it anywhere, but you could, um, for example, you could identify from the quiet spots where each word begins and ends. You know? Okay, all right, I see. It was just, well, what I was just one thing you to do is just practice and get familiar with um, using MATLAB and some of the things you can do. Okay, sir. Um, yeah, the arising out of that lab, what I'm really, what I would, re what you will really get a grade on is, is just the fact that you've recorded your voice, you've normalized it. And you can show me that you've written some code, you know, your code to, to do that. Um, so the, the grading is sort of very non, non, non detailed, if you know what I mean. I just want to. Yes, I understand. I understand what you mean. Yeah, I'm getting it's really on. like an introduction. Yeah, yeah. Remember. But coming out of the lab, as I say is that you have, you're going to have your voice recording, which from now on you will be you processing, will. doing various things with it, you know. For some labs, okay. not every lab. Okay, okay. Sir. And it's how many labs again? It's four, correct? Well, I'd like to do more than four. Um, but I think one, one, of, one of the well, one of the processing things that you will do will be regarded as an assignment. I will see, I will see. Um, but basically they're not, they're not, most of them are fairly simple to do, you know. And um, so you shouldn't be afraid of doing too many things. As I say, no, sir, I just wanted a, an idea, but no, if there's a particular number. If you, yeah. that you have well, in mind. Well, I've been well, maybe about five lands. Okay, um, sir. And then, yeah, one or two practical um, assignments, like, you know. So, 
Yeah, I think, but no, I don't think no more than five. Okay, sir. All right, thank you. All right. All right, what, what I could do anyway, it, I, I could um, delay actually, because we, we sort of missed out a week, I think that the next week thing, if anything, we could delay taking in that lava until the following Tuesday. Um, give you a little yes, more. Yes, sir, time. that would be good. That would be yes, good. Sir, that would be good. Okay. Yes, sir, because um, I just sort of actually learning myself math lab or teaching myself how to go on math lab. Yeah. Yes, all right. Oh my God, so, uh -huh. let's, let's delay it for another week so it isn't required next Tuesday again. But the, the following Tuesday, you could let me have it. And then I, what I will actually be doing, I think, the following Tuesday, for the following Tuesday, I will be giving up the second lab. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm. All right. Well, if there's no... Yes, sir. Oh, there is. All right. Just the final thing is how soon will we have access to last week's um, session and... All right. And this last session. Lecture yeah. notes and all. Y yeah. Um... I had, what I had done, I had re-recorded, uh, I had re-recorded, I think, last week. Um, yeah, have you looked on the, you looked on the platform? I'll, I'll check and yes, if, if, um, if it's not there, I'll just try to post everything later this evening. Okay, sir. Sure. Um, one more question, sir. Um, I, I heard you. I, I heard you said something about um, group of five or something. Like that. But my connection went up and down a while ago, so I never heard it. Um, what you said exactly? Could you repeat? Somebody yeah, what you said? Else? Said about what? Um, about, about something like about group of five. A, a person asked a question, but I, and, and I didn't get to hear what you were saying because my internet uh, was stuck to it. Oh, a group, a group of five. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, well, I, I mentioned that um, I would like, if possible, that you could do five labs. Um, oh, okay, okay. Five labs. And, and okay. then there is going to be um, one assignment which is practical again, as far as I remember. But uh, anyway, no more than five labs, definitely not. All right. Well, thank you very much then. And um, till next week. Oh, before, just one thing. I know that, um, well, Miss Henry called me on Tuesday asking about the lab, but I just want you to understand that even, even before the, the whole COVID thing, we were not really doing labs in the lab anymore. Um, in, in fact, the lab has one deficiency and that is the, the, they only had one set of sound card, only one set of speakers and only one microphone to record the voice. And the microphone wasn't good quality. So in fact, most people were doing everything using their laptop. The microphone on these laptops is good and the, the speakers are good and you, you know it's all very together. You don't have to be plugging in or plugging out. So um, for the last couple of years just about everybody has been doing their labs outside, away from the lab. So as far as I'm concerned um, there's no need to come in to the lab unless um, I think I think one person had mentioned that there was a there was a, a problem they didn't have MATLAB or so but um, 
the the thing is that uh, regarding people may then say, well, why why are there why are they planning to to put more than another lab or two onto the system? Well, of course, the thing of the whole thing of marking, right? And the, the actual lab being in the lab is not a problem. Is the marking is a lot of work, so um, it, it it is going ahead like that. And of course, there should be a limit to the the lab size in any case. So I will repeat for those who maybe didn't hear at the beginning. Dr. Richardson had called me regarding um, opening a second lab. A lab time, because some people were saying, "Well, they have clashes, you know." But we won't really. We may, we may actually, occasionally, we could meet if there's a problem, and people want to ask questions about it. But as such, there's no official lab session when you have to be in the lab. But as I said, there there is a whole issue of the quantities that that the system allows per lab. And um, and therefore, more labs will be opened up. So I understand. All right. Anything else? There being none, I will sign off. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. All right. So. Mr. Hope, you can, I just close it out now. Yeah, well, yeah, because you can just end the meeting. Uh -huh. All nice. right. Well, thanks again, and next week, same time. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs>